Semiconductors are the invisible engine of our modern world, quietly powering the devices and systems that shape our daily lives. Though we rarely see them, these tiny chips are at the core of nearly every piece of technology we depend on, from the moment we wake up to the time we go to sleep. They drive everything from the smartphones in our pockets and the computers on our desks, to the electric vehicles on our roads and the smart devices in our homes. Without semiconductors, the digital conveniences and innovations we take for granted would simply not exist. These microscopic switches, each smaller than a single virus, are the foundation of modern communication, advanced healthcare equipment, efficient transportation networks, and even the security systems that protect nations. Their presence is so fundamental that we often forget how much of our world relies on their flawless operation. The journey of a single chip is a story of global cooperation. Designs may originate in California or Europe, manufacturing might take place in Taiwan or South Korea, and final assembly could happen in factories across the world. This intricate web of collaboration is a testament to human ingenuity and the interconnectedness of our economies. Yet this very interconnectedness has also created new vulnerabilities. As nations become more dependent on these chips, the risks of disruption grow. Recent years have seen mounting geopolitical tensions with countries realizing just how fragile and exposed the global semiconductor supply chain truly is. Only a select few companies possess the expertise and technology to produce the most advanced chips. This concentration of capability has transformed the semiconductor industry into a high-stakes arena, where global influence and technological supremacy are fiercely contested. Governments now view control over chip technology as a matter of national security, investing billions to secure their own supply and restrict access for rivals. The stakes have never been higher. What was once a collaborative, borderless system is now fracturing under the weight of strategic competition. The world's leading powers are racing to outpace each other, erecting barriers and forging new alliances in pursuit of technological dominance. Today, the global semiconductor supply chain is being deliberately pulled apart. Factories stand idle, production lines are halted, and companies scramble to secure critical components as old partnerships dissolve. Nations are blocking rivals' access to essential chip-making tools and materials, imposing export bans and restrictions that escalate tensions. These actions threaten to usher in a new era marked by scarcity, uncertainty, and the real possibility of technological conflict. The battle for control over the world's most critical technology is no longer hidden. It is an open confrontation with consequences that will shape the future for every nation, every industry, and every individual on the planet. At the heart of advanced chip making stands ASML, a Dutch company that has quietly become one of the most important players in the global technology landscape. While it may not be a household name like Apple or Samsung, ASML's influence reaches into nearly every device we use today. The company holds a monopoly on extreme ultraviolet, or EUV, lithography, a technology so advanced that no other firm in the world can match it. EUV machines use incredibly short wavelengths of light to etch the tiniest features onto silicon wafers, enabling the creation of the most powerful and efficient microchips. ASML's machines are engineering marvels, each the size of a city bus and costing upwards of $200 million. Building one requires over 100,000 parts sourced from a global network of suppliers, and the assembly process can take months. These machines are absolutely essential for producing the world's most advanced chips. Without ASML's technology, the latest iPhones, high-performance AI servers, and even the most sophisticated supercomputers simply couldn't exist. The chips inside these devices rely on the precision and power of EUV lithography. This technological mastery has made ASML the ultimate choke point in the global tech race. Its machines are so complex and unique that they have become a critical bottleneck for the entire semiconductor industry. For years, ASML supplied the world's biggest chip makers, from the US to South Korea and Taiwan, and increasingly, to a rapidly growing market in China. Its reach is truly global, and its customers include every major player in the semiconductor world. But, this unique position has not gone unnoticed. Western policymakers, especially in the US and Europe, have come to see ASML as a strategic asset. They believe that restricting China's access to EUV technology is crucial to slowing its technological rise and maintaining a competitive edge. As tensions between the US and China escalate, 
the fate of ASML has become central to the global rivalry over technology and economic power. The company now finds itself at the heart of a geopolitical tug-of-war. Today, ASML's sales and technology are inextricably linked to a worldwide technological blockade, with export controls and trade restrictions shaping who can access its groundbreaking machines. A once-obscure Dutch company now sits at the very center of a worldwide power struggle, its technology shaping the future of global innovation and competition. The US, alarmed by China's rapid tech advances, shifted from competition to containment, Washington pressured the Dutch government to block ASML from selling EUV machines to China, citing security risks. Reluctant at first, the Netherlands eventually aligned with the US, banning EUV, and, later, advanced DUV exports to China. These controls created a technological barrier, aiming to keep China generations behind. For a while, it worked. Chinese firms struggled to advance, and the West's lead seemed secure. But the blockade only fueled China's determination. Beijing saw the controls as economic warfare and doubled down on self-sufficiency. The US strategy, intended to contain China, instead ignited a national drive for technological independence. The stage was set for a dramatic response. The chip war had truly begun. In response, China launched its own Manhattan Project for chips, aiming to break ASML's monopoly. Led by Huawei and backed by unlimited funding, China recruited top engineers from around the world with huge incentives. Foreign experts worked in secret labs, blending global expertise with relentless reverse engineering of older ASML machines. Chinese teams scoured the globe for second-hand equipment, disassembling and analyzing every part. By early 2025, China announced a working EUV prototype, a breakthrough few thought possible so soon. The machine hadn't yet produced chips, but it generated the crucial EUV light source. The news sent shockwaves through the industry. The West's technological wall was beginning to crack. China's crash program was making real, rapid progress. China retaliated by restricting exports of rare earth elements, vital for high-tech manufacturing. New rules required government licenses and targeted materials for AI and military tech, directly responding to Western chip controls. ASML and others warned of shipment delays exposing the West's dependence on Chinese minerals, prices for rare earth soared, and manufacturers faced new risks of sudden supply disruptions. China's move demonstrated its willingness to inflict economic pain to achieve strategic goals. The message was clear, restrict our tech, and we'll restrict your raw materials. The global supply chain fractured further, pushing the world toward rival economic blocks. The era of collaborative supply chains was ending. The tech war had become a two-way street. Tensions peaked when the Dutch government seized Nexperia, a Chinese-owned chipmaker in the Netherlands citing national security. The move disrupted global car production and angered Beijing, which called it blatant protectionism. Europe was no longer a bystander. It was picking a side in the tech war. The seizure set a precedent, raising fears of retaliatory actions against Western assets in China. It showed Western governments were willing to dismantle existing economic ties for security. The cost economic self-harm, and deeper diplomatic rifts. Europe faced a painful choice between security and economic interests. The global economy entered even more turbulent waters. Public statements from leaders often lag behind reality. ASML's CEO insisted China was a decade behind, even as evidence mounted of rapid Chinese progress. The announcement of China's EUV prototype shattered Western assumptions. China's strategy of talent recruitment and reverse engineering was working. Chinese officials framed their efforts as self-defense against Western technological hegemony. The West saw its actions as necessary defense. China saw them as aggression. This fundamental disconnect made diplomacy nearly impossible. Both sides believed they were acting defensively, fueling a cycle of escalation. The world's tech industry was being pulled apart by clashing narratives. The semiconductor industry, once the backbone of a tightly connected global economy, is now splitting into rival self-sufficient blocks. For decades, microchips flowed freely across borders, powering everything from smartphones to cars, and enabling a level of innovation and efficiency the world had never seen before. But today, that era is rapidly coming to an end. 
the US, Europe, and their allies are pouring billions of dollars into building domestic chipmaking capacity, determined to secure their own supply chains and reduce reliance on foreign technology. This marks a dramatic reversal of decades of globalization as governments intervene to protect what they now see as a critical industry for national security and economic stability. Meanwhile, China is racing to build a fully independent semiconductor ecosystem of its own, investing heavily in research, manufacturing, and talent. The goal is clear, to eliminate Western technology from its supply chains, and become self-reliant in the face of growing restrictions and export controls. The result is the emergence of two parallel technology worlds, each developing its own standards, supply chains, and innovation hubs. Interaction between these blocks is becoming increasingly limited, as trust erodes and competition intensifies. This decoupling brings massive inefficiencies, higher costs, and ongoing shortages. The once seamless flow of components is now disrupted, leading to delays and bottlenecks that ripple through the global economy. For consumers, this means paying more for electronics, waiting longer for new products, and seeing fewer choices on store shelves. Innovation may slow, as collaboration across borders grinds to a halt, and companies struggle to keep up with rising costs and shrinking markets. Companies are now forced to source components within their own blocks, limiting choice and flexibility. This shift not only affects big tech firms, but also small manufacturers and startups who once relied on a global network of suppliers. The end of global standards could create a splinter net where devices and software aren't compatible across borders. Consumers may find themselves locked into regional ecosystems, unable to use their favorite apps or connect their devices when traveling or moving abroad. The era of seamless global technology where ideas and products move freely is ending. International collaboration, once the engine of progress, is giving way to isolation and fragmentation. The true costs of this separation, economic, technological, and social, are only beginning to emerge. As the world's most advanced industry fractures, the consequences will be felt by everyone, everywhere, for years to come. The chip crisis marks the start of a new, uncertain era for global technology. Prices will rise, supply chains will remain unstable, and the dream of ever cheaper electronics may fade. National self-sufficiency will reshape innovation, likely slowing progress as collaboration ends. Competing standards could create new digital divides and hinder global commerce. For consumers, the future may be less connected and more expensive. Resources spent on redundant supply chains could have addressed other global challenges. The chip war is a fight with huge opportunity costs for humanity. The choices made now will shape the technological world for generations to come.